All right, emergency press conference, guys. Former President Donald Trump almost got assassinated, like yesterday. And you know, that's a little bit old, that chart. That chart's a couple of months old, and if you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. I'm making this video, it's Sunday right now. It's been 24 hours roughly since the event occurred. I wanna do a quick breakdown, as much information as I've been able to gather for this entire thing. It's been crazy, speculation's been off the charts. There's been all kinds of conflicting information, tons of people trying to analyze the shooter's position in relation to where President Donald Trump was and all of the other nuanced stuff. So we're gonna go into detail and we're gonna go through some videos and kind of do a breakdown of this. The first thing we're gonna watch is obviously the clip live from Butler, Pennsylvania. Okay, so this is, this is when it actually happened. And everyone's like, what's going on? Donald Trump went down, Secret Service agents jumped on top of him, and then that was that. Was that. That's the famous clip where he, he's like, wait, 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 wait. And he does, he puts his fists in the air, say, I think he was mouthing the words fight. The Secret Service agents were surrounding him, obviously, because it's like standard operating procedure to completely surround the president if there's been shots fired, to, like with their bodies, because they're all wearing bulletproof vests, and so is he. And then this way, there's like multiple people and bulletproof vests between them and the president or the former president, right? You see various like assault load Secret Service agents with a sidearm and a Secret Service assault rifle. Guy standing on stage. Once once the Secret Service agents behind him or behind the podium take Trump to the ground, assault-clad Secret Service agents get up there to be watching in different directions out this way. Meanwhile, if you look in the background, you can see their sniper team that's up on the roof and they're they're looking in one direction there's people looking in every different direction there's people coming up on side of the stage you know there was a lot of stuff going on somebody shot this photo and circled like what looks like a trail of some kind somebody was trying to say that it was like the bullet trail as it passed by him and then you can see the next picture is like he's like reaching up and grabbing his ear and then the next one is like he's coming back from touching his ear after the bullet went through it says, watch the very moment this the photo was taken. And there it is. It was like this. The cameraman who has taken those pictures. Bro. Talk about going all in for the photo of a lifetime. Dude. That's unbelievable. They, this dude, that cameraman was like, I'm going in, I'm going all in, don't care. I'm going to get the photo of a lifetime. Anyway, so there's been a lot of stuff that's been going on with this. It's been all over the place. I mean, there's so much speculation. Really, what ended up happening is the shooter fired like four or five shots. And then as soon as he fired, the Secret Service sniper team that was up on that roof opened fire and killing the shooter instantly after they shot him in the head. If you look at this image, you can see where the location of the shooter is, like the approximate location. He was on top of a roof. He had climbed up on that roof from a ladder that was leaned up against the side of that building, and he climbed up on there facing towards the former president. Meanwhile, a building behind the former president was where the counter-sniper team was, and they were they had a clear shot of that building. There's also a second sniper team, sniper team Alpha, sniper team Bravo. Sniper team Alpha had an obstructed view. They couldn't really see the gunmen from where they were at, but sniper team B could. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, that was the video of the shooter up on his position on that building, taking those those multiple shots in a row. And then finally, after he had shot multiple times, getting taken out by the Secret Service snipers. You can see right here, the shooter was about 134 meters away from the Secret Service personnel that were on the roof, about 137 meters away from the former president. Yeah, so it's like 411 feet. That's not that far. 137 meters is pretty is pretty close. Obviously, this guy is a terrible shot. Probably doesn't have any like professional marksmanship training. Apparently, this kid was bullied a lot and was trying to join a shooting club, but they turned him down because he was such a bad shot that they said he would be a danger to the shooting club. So they just wouldn't let him. They wouldn't let him participate. That was one of the things. There was also another video: a dude wearing a red hat. We noticed the guy crawling, arm, you know bear crawling up the roof of the building beside us, 50, 50 feet away from us. So we're standing there, you know, we're pointing, we're pointing at the guy crawling up the roof. And he had a gun, right? He had a rifle. A rifle. We could clearly see him with a rifle. Absolutely. Um, we're pointing at him. The police are down there running around on the ground. We're like, hey, man, there's a guy on the roof with a rifle. And the police were like, huh, what? You know, like, like they didn't know what was going on. You know, we're like, hey, right here on the roof, we can see him from right here. We see him. You know, he's he's crawling. And next thing you know, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, why is Trump still speaking? Why have they not pulled him off the stage? I'm standing there pointing at him for, you know, two or three minutes. Secret Service is looking at us from the top of the barn. I'm pointing at that roof, just standing there like this. Bro. And next thing you know, five shots running out. So you're, you're certain... That the shots came from that guy on the roof. Hundred percent, hundred percent. And he he was up there for a couple of minutes. He was up you there. You saw him up there for a couple of minutes. Absolutely, at least three to four were, minutes. And you were telling yep. the police in the secret service. We were telling the police. We were pointing at him for the secret service, who were looking at us from the top of the barn. They were looking at us the whole time when we were standing by that tree. Could they see? Binoculars. Him? Could they see? Him? Probably not, because the roof, the way the, the slope went, he was behind where they could see. But but why is there not secret service on all of these roofs? Dude, that's crazy. These dudes were trying to, they were trying to tell Secret Service that there was a gunman up on the roof. They were trying to get their attention and they, they couldn't see it or they just didn't, maybe they just didn't get the message or something. I've seen that clip everywhere. That's unreal. Now, there's also a video out there that's showing like the moment when the snipers took the shot. Uh, and you know, that's a little bit old. That chart's that a couple of months old and... If you, you see uh, want to really see something, snipers just, uh, in the back. take a look at what happened. Insane. I mean, it's just un unbelievable. In this image, you can see the building where the shooter was on top of that, like, tan-looking building with a slight slope. And then you can see this crowd of people standing right here. Um, and then below that is also the same crowd of people facing that same building, the same entrance on that building. If you look at image 7012, it can show you another very good view of where the shooter was. You can see exactly where this guy was, where he was positioned on this roof. I will say the most iconic photo of this year is for sure the image that everybody saw plastered all over the internet of the former president holding his fist up in the air saying fight with the Secret Service members all around him and the American flag right behind him waving in the wind. That's possibly one of the most shared images on the internet within the past 24 hours easily every other person that i saw on social media had posted that i mean it's just crazy just like the defiance like he's like i'm not i'm not quitting unreal the whole thing's unreal now unfortunately when when the shooter took aim at this guy he actually um seriously wounded somebody that was behind him and on top of wounding the former president and a man lost his life. The one person that lost their life during this assassination attempt was Corey Comparatori. He was a former fire chief. He recently posted, what is he doing tonight? Well, he said, oh, I'm going to uh, the Trump rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. And he tweeted that. After this event happened, his daughter took to the internet and posted about what had happened. 
Yesterday, time stopped, and when it started again, my family and I started living a real-life nightmare. What was supposed to be an exciting day that we had all looked forward to, especially my dad, turned into the most traumatizing experiences someone could imagine. I know the media will cover this event, and I'm going to try my best to stay away from looking at everything, especially because I've already seen and lived through it in real time. But I want everyone to know what the media will not cover and will not say about my dad. He was the best dad a girl could ever ask for. My sisters and I never needed for anything. You call, he would answer, and he would an- he would do whatever it is you needed. And if he didn't know how, he would figure out how. He could talk and make friends with anyone, which he was doing all day yesterday and loved every minute of it. He was a man of God, loved Jesus fiercely, and also looked after our church and our members as family. The media will not tell you that he died a real-life superhero. They're not going to tell you how quickly he threw my mom and I to the ground. They're not going to tell you that he shielded my body from the bullet that came at us. He loved his family. He truly loved us enough to take a real bullet for us. I, I want nothing more than to cry on him and tell him thank you. I want nothing more than to wake up and for this to be not a reality for me and my family. We lost a selfless, loving husband, father, brother, uncle, son, and friend. And I will never stop thinking about him and mourning over him until the day that I die too. July 13th will forever be a day that changed my life. I will never be the same person I was less than 24 hours ago. There are a lot of children out there that say their dad is their hero, but my dad really is mine. I don't think I would be here today without him. Dad, I love you so much. There aren't enough words to express how deep that love goes. I know you'll go to heaven. I know you'll give heaven some hell. I know that God is proud of the man that came to his gates yesterday. Yeah, that's crazy. This dude was firefighter. He uh, shielded his wife and daughter from the rounds that were coming in with his own body to keep them alive. We could all learn to be a provider and a protector like this guy. You know, that's unbelievable. Now, if you look at this image that's been going around, Donald Trump had turned his head to the right just barely right before the shots to like started going off and there's a good chance that if he hadn't done that turn of his head that he could have got hit right in his dome piece he got clipped in the ear when he started turning to the right that small slight movement might have just saved his life after the shooter was taken down there was people that recorded video of this guy the body i think they hit him because the guy is it looks bad. Yeah. Okay. I think they hit him. Yeah. There's also a very iconic photo here of law enforcement agents standing over the body of the shooter who had been taken out by the sniper team, the Secret Service sniper team. The suspect that the FBI had released information on was a guy that was a 20 year old dude named Thomas Matthew Crooks. He was shot by the Secret Service sniper team on that building that was adjacent to the former president. Um, There's a lot of speculation, and a lot of people are wondering how he got so close to the president and how he was able to get up on that building without being detected, how he was allowed to get into that position without being seen or taken out, or why nobody did anything to stop him from getting up there, why they didn't have people up on that building already since it was like, a building that had a unobstructed view of the podium. The one thing is, is this guy had no criminal record. Um, Apparently he was registered as a Republican. He had an AR-15 style semi-automatic rifle purchased by his father, from what authorities said. The guy was a local to Butler, Pennsylvania. He was a resident of Bethel Park, about an hour away from where the shooting occurred. Yeah, two years ago, Crooks graduated from the local high school where he received a $500 star award from the National Math and Science Initiative. While there, he did not show any particular interest in politics, according to a classmate, and he often kept to himself. Politics never really came up. There's also like people saying that there were suspicious devices found in his vehicle, which was inspected by bomb technicians and rendered safe. So Crook's gun had been legally bought by the suspect's father, from what the FBI said. Bruce Piendel, owner of Allegheny Arms and Gunworks in Bethel Park, said that after learning the shooting, he checked his records. He said, we didn't sell any firearms to the shooter. And he also said, we did not sell a firearm that was used in the shooting to the family. And then when they were asked whether they sold any firearms to the Crooks family members, they declined to provide a direct answer. That's between me and God. 
A guy named Jason Kohler, who also attended the same high school but didn't share any classes with him, said that crooks used to get bullied at high school and sat alone at lunchtime. Other students mocked him for the clothes that he wore, including hunting outfits. He was bullied almost every day, from what Kohler was telling reporters. He was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays. Crooks actually also worked at a nursing home as a dietary aide. Now, the interesting thing is that records show Crooks was registered as a Republican voter in Pennsylvania, but federal campaign finance reports show that he gave $15 to a progressive political action committee on January 20th of 2021, the day President Joe Biden was sworn into office. Very weird. I'll let you decide, like, why that is. He's still registered as a Republican. I mean, there's there's a couple different things that could happen. He could have just registered as, as a Republican at one point when he was younger, and then maybe he decided to make the switch and just never changed who, what party he was registered for. I know a lot of people probably don't do that, but that's also, it's still odd. If somebody cared enough to donate to a political action committee, why wouldn't they care enough to register as the party they want to affiliate with, unless they want to keep that private? If they wanted to keep it private, though, they could have just registered as an independent, you know? They ended up setting up a blockade near uh, Crook's house. They forced a bunch of people to leave their houses while they kind of cleared the area and inspected things and made sure that they could, like, check everything around there. So immediately after Donald Trump got to the hospital, he's he took to, to Truth Social and posted a, a thread about it saying, I want to thank the United States Secret Service and all of law enforcement for their rapid response on the shooting that just took place in Butler, Pennsylvania. Most importantly, I want to extend my condolences to the family of the person at the rally who was killed and also to the family of another person that was badly injured. It is incredible that such an act can take place in our country. Nothing is known at this time about the shooter who is now dead. I was shot with a bullet that pierced the upper part of my right ear. I knew immediately that something was wrong in that I heard a whizzing sound shots and immediately felt the rip it, the bullet ripping through my skin. Much bleeding took place. So I realized then what was happening. God bless America. And then that evening, he said, thank you to everyone for your thoughts and prayers yesterday as it was God alone who prevented the unthinkable from happening. We will fear not, but will instead remain resilient in our faith and defiant in the face of wickedness. Our love goes out to the other victims and their families. We pray for the recovery of those who were wounded and hold in our hearts the memory of the citizen who is so horribly killed. In this moment, it is more important than ever that we stand united and show our true character as Americans, remaining strong and determined and not allowing evil to win. I truly love our country and love you all and look forward to speaking to our great nation this week from Wisconsin. And today, he released this. Based on yesterday's terrible events, I was going to delay my trip to Wisconsin in the Republican National Convention by two days, but have just decided that I cannot allow a shooter or potential assassin to force change or schedule or anything else. Therefore, I will be leaving for Milwaukee as scheduled at 3.30 p.m. today. Thank you, Donald J. Trump. And actually, there is a video of his motorcade. Yeah, so that's... Uh, that's the motorcade heading to their jet, their private jet, so that they can head to Milwaukee for the Republican National Convention. He was going to delay it because of the whole situation, but they decided to go through with it. A couple real big donors that I saw, people that came out of the woodwork that publicly endorsed the former president at, like during this event, one was Elon Musk. So Elon Musk tweeted, Elon Musk tweeted this. He says, I fully endorse President Trump and hope for his rapid recovery. Elon Musk tweeted that out of the blue. Nobody saw that coming, you know. He came out publicly endorsing Donald Trump. And another big, big person, a guy named Bill Ackman, said, I am going to formally endorse Donald Trump. I came to this decision a long time ago. As many ex-followers have already understood from my supportive posts of Trump and my criticisms of POTUS. The reason why I have not yet formally done so is that I want to explain my my thinking in detail and address the arguments put forth by others against Trump. I want to make the case thoughtfully and convincingly. Today, when one announces an intention to support Trump, Biden supporters who know me tend to assume that I have lost it. I assure you that I have made this decision carefully, rationally, and by relying on as much empirical data as possible. It will take a long-form post to explain my thinking. I might even break my own record. 
I just haven't had the time nor felt the urgency to write the post as we are still a few months from the election. I am explaining my conclusion now in response to many questions I have received on the topic so that I am formally on the record. You, of course, don't need to care about my opinion, so feel free to not read my post when it appears. That said, I believe the upcoming presidential election is one of the most consequential elections in my lifetime, so I am taking the proper time to articulate observations that I will share widely for which I assumed an important responsibility. I have had the benefit of spending a few hours recently with President Trump, so I will have some firsthand observations to share. As always, I respect everyone's right to form and share their own own views on this important topic. Please keep an open mind on the upcoming presidential election. Bear in mind that your views on Trump have likely been dramatically affected if you have sourced your info on Trump from mainstream media or friends or family who have relied on mainstream media as a source of knowledge. And then he ends with, we have all recently learned in the starkest manner, the debate, how we cannot rely on the MSM as our source of truth on the ultimate political question. Remember, media organizations are like sports teams that run plays chosen by their owners and executed by the coaches they hire. They are not unbiased arbiters of truth. Elon Musk and Bill Ackman both formally, formally endorsed the former president, so... Very interesting turn of events. Another thing that I thought was interesting is Melania Trump released a letter on the 14th of July. And she said, I am thinking of you now, my my fellow Americans. We have always been a unique union. America, the fabric of our gentle nation is tattered, but our courage and common sense must ascend and bring us back together as one. As one. When I watched that violent bullet strike my husband, Donald, I realized my life and Barron's life were on the brink of devastating change. I am grateful to the brave Secret Service agents and law enforcement officials who risked their own lives to protect my husband. To the families of the innocent victims who are now suffering from this heinous act, I humbly offer my sincerest sympathy. You need to summon your inner strength for such a terrible reason saddens me. A monster who recognized my husband as an inhuman political machine attempted to wring out Donald's passion, his laughter, ingenuity, love of music, and inspiration. The core facets of my human, my husband's life, his human side, were buried below the political machine. Donald, the generous and caring man who I have been with through the best of times and the worst of times. Let us not forget the differing opinions, policy, and political games are inferior to love. Our personal structural and life commitment until death is at serious risk. Political concepts are simple when compared to us human beings. We are all humans. Fundamentally, instinctively, we want to help one another. American politics are only one vehicle that can uplift our communities. Love, compassion, kindness, and empathy are necessities. And let us remember that when the time comes to look beyond the left and the right, beyond the red and the blue, we all come from families with the passion to fight for a better life together while we are here in this earthly realm. Dawn is here again. Let us reunite now. This morning, ascend above the hate, the vitriol, and the simple-minded ideas that ignite violence. We all want a world where respect is paramount, family is first, and love transcends. We can realize the world again. Each of us must demand to get it back. We must insist that respect fills the cornerstone of our relationships again. I am thinking of you, my fellow Americans. The winds of change have arrived. For those of you who cry in support, I thank you. I commend to you, I commend those of you who have reached out beyond this po- political divide. Thank you for remembering that every single politician is a man or a woman with a loving family. I mean, she's spot on, man. Like, you can't have you can't have this kind of stuff happening on the left or the right. I don't care what political what side of the aisle you're on. I'm not gonna like. I'm not using this video to endorse him. I'm just trying to analyze this situation. It's very interesting, and it's also insane because this is the first time that a president has been has had an assassination attempt since Ronald Reagan in 1981, 43 years ago. 43 years ago. That's crazy. That's the last time something like this happened. That is monumental. And if you don't think that this is monumental, well, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Meanwhile, my cats are back there acting stupid. Get out of here. There's a lot of stuff that people are interested in. They're interested in like what's going on with the Secret Service? Where was the failure? Was it actually because the guy was told not to fire on the shooter even though he had him in his sights for 3 minutes? Is that factual? Is that real? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sure we're going to find out. I also heard that there was a law enforcement agent that saw the shooter as he was prepping and climbed up the ladder. And when the shooter swung around and aimed his rifle at the law enforcement officer, he climbed back down to provide cover for himself. And then that's when the shooter went and took off and took his took his shots. So I don't know. Maybe maybe that law enforcement official like 
appeared from behind cover behind the shooter and the the snipers from the secret service saw the law enforcement officer trying to not also accidentally shoot a law enforcement official that could also be a thing too i don't know what i do know is that the secret service publicly said they're not planning on making any adjustments for the republican national convention even after this thing happened there have been no changes to our current uh, operational security plans for this event So again, this event is designated as a national special security event. So it is a 18 month process that uh, involves uh, all levels of government uh, that are contributing to the operational security plans for this event. So we have an operational security plan that's built out for every area of responsibility related to uh, any and all aspects of security related to this event. I'm curious, obviously you don't want to talk about what happened in Pennsylvania. Have you had to change your security posture at all here? And if so, how is that a small percent change? Is it looking at So as Mayor Johnson and Chief mentioned, this is a national special security event. That designation is the highest level of security designation that the, that the federal government can uh, determine. So we are confident they, in these security plans that are in place for this event and we're ready to go. Um, it's been an 18 month process. Uh, it's the, we've worked together over that 18 months to develop operational security plans for any and all aspects of security related to this event. But did it change within the last, has any change been made in the last 20 months? We're not anticipating any changes to our operational security plans for this event. Thank you. Okay, so you heard it. They are not anticipating any changes for this upcoming event the Republican National Convention. I wonder why that is. That's an interesting thing to say publicly. I mean, there could be a couple of reasons. Maybe they're saying that so that way people think that they're doing the same thing, but they are actually making changes or they are just not making changes and they're like, no, we're good. We've been planning this for 18 months. Uh, this is the most thorough high viz event of the year, really, you know, other than the Democratic National Convention. So it's rock solid. So I don't know. Interesting to hear them say that as well, because you, you would have thought, OK, maybe they're going to want to lock down even more or like fill in even more gaps. But she seemed pretty confident that they didn't need to. I'm not a professional security analyst. I don't have any type of clearance to see any of the stuff that they have. So there's no way for me to know whether or not that's like true or not. I just have to take their word for it. This has been a crazy 24 hours. It's currently July 14th as I'm recording this video. This video is probably not going to post until, you know, the 16th, maybe the 15th. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how long it takes. This has been an insane past 24 hours. Uh, unprecedented stuff. I'm about to turn 38. I was not alive when the last time something like this happened in this country. That's crazy to think about. My condolences go out to the Comparatory family for their loss. Also to the other individual that was was wounded and to everybody that was affected by this. This is not how you handle disagreements when it comes to politics, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on. This is, this is uh, unacceptable behavior and it shouldn't be tolerated on any side. It shouldn't be something that we endorse on any side, regardless of who the person is. I'm sure that a lot more stuff about this is going to be coming out in the coming days because there is more developing information coming out. I, I believe that there's a full on investigation happening. I read somewhere that Congress has mandated that they're going to convene and that they are requesting the head of the Secret Service attend. Kimberly Cheadle, the 27th director of the U.S. Secret Service, she's been requested to attend. What does that mean? Does that mean that she has to? She hasn't been like court ordered to. Is she going to go? I don't know. Find out on the next episode. So the Republican National Convention convenes this week, Monday, July 15th through Thursday, July 18th, 2024. A lot of stuff is going to come out this week. We're probably going to find out who the vice presidential pick is going to be for the former president. And I hope that everything is locked down tight there. I do. I genuinely do. If, if we've learned anything from this, hopefully it's that uh, there are some security gaps and they need to do a deep analysis of this. I believe that there's an investigation that's going to occur and under what happened and how how this happened and how this gap in security occurred. Hopefully they can prevent this type of thing happening again in the future. Thanks so much for watching.
I know that was probably very long-winded. If you didn't get any of this information prior to this, hopefully it filled in some gaps. If you saw or heard anything different, let me know in the comments. If there was any information that you think I left out that was pertinent, put it in the comments as well, so that way we can keep the information circulating. As always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.